This is the day the Lord has made. Welcome to Deerhurst Presbyterian Church. At last check, you can be in the church, the pews right now, or you can be at home watching on your TV set or on your computer screen, or you can be somewhere far away watching on your iPad or even your telephone. We give thanks for everybody who is a part of our worshiping community this morning. A um, couple quick reminders. One, you're not here by accident. So in a little bit, we will recognize that we have been called to worship and we say yes to God for God's invitation. Two, prayer is very important to this worshiping community. So if you brought with you a joy or a concern with you this morning that you would like to have be a part of our prayers, then you can get that to me in a couple different ways. During the singing of the first hymn, Nancy Fleshauer, who was our head usher this morning, she will walk up and down the aisles and she will collect any yellow cards that have joys or concerns on them for later in worship. Also, my cell phone number is in your bulletin. And so if you text me, um, I will check that just before we enter into prayer. And um, your prayer will be, uh, your joy or concern will become part of our prayers. Today, is a celebration of all saints and all souls. So if you want to use a yellow card to write down the name of someone that kind of led the way for you to know faith, to have faith, to be a follower, that would be wonderful. Someone who has gone before you. So if there's someone in your heart that you would like to have uh, built into that part of our worship service, um, Sandy Mundir is going to chime a bell for us. So as we mention names, names that we can say out loud, but also names that are in our hearts, part of that service will be a chiming of the bell to remember them. Um, okay, you first? Okay. Hands up. The first two announcements are not in your bulletin, and I know you're going to want to take notes. The uh, Mission Outreach Committee is again collecting, not collecting, selling gift cards, which you're paying for, but you don't get. <laughs> We're collecting gift cards for uh, Lindbergh Elementary School's Thanksgiving gift baskets. And how good were some of your memories? You said, why aren't you selling Tops cards anymore? And I said, Tops cards did us wrong. So we're selling cards from Aldi, where we hope they'll be able to get more bang for your buck. Um, I'll be in the back before worship. I won't be there after worship because I'm still in Sunday school, but you can donate any amount. We're trying to raise enough to buy 35 $20 gift cards, but anything you want to give would be lovely, and I'll be there Sunday mornings for the next couple of weeks, and then we'll just go buy the gift cards at Aldi and get them over to Lindbergh, and it'll be lovely. Second announcement, we segue from Thanksgiving to Christmas. I'm starting to put together the Christmas program. I have a little skit for three very prominent gentlemen in this congregation they've agreed to do. But I would also like if you have a gift or a talent of music, singing, something you would like to bring to the Christmas program, let me know and we're going to put it all together and it's going to be great. Final one is in your bulletin, sociables. We're going to the golf dome, and then we're going to dinner. You can come to golf, you can come for dinner, you can do both, you can do one, you can do the other, but there's a sign-up sheet downstairs in Fellowship Hall. It's on Saturday, November 18th. Anyone 21 years and older is welcome, and the more the merrier. Couple, couple things I forgot. Jill and I will be here this afternoon at 4.30. And anyone who wishes to come join us, we meditate. So we do 15 minutes, 20 minutes of silence, paying attention to our breathing, and then we chat for a little bit, and we do another 15 or 20 minutes, and then we go home. But it's just a great way to 
uh, continue to worship. Um, and so that's this afternoon. Tuesday, Joe and I, and anybody else who would like to go along, head up to Stella Niagara, where there's a group that meditates and does contemplative prayer there. And so we usually leave somewhere around six, but if you would like to go with us, give Joe a call. Okay. Hi. As you know, my name is Roya Plermo. This announcement is for the deacons. Before we go out and buy this particular item, I was wondering if anyone had one to spare that they would be willing to donate. Are you curious what this item is? Well, as you know, I have a riddle for that. <laughs> I make a drink that keeps you up. I even come with my own pot. What am I? A coffee maker. Unfortunately, our decaf coffee maker has decided to go to coffee maker heaven. So we need a new one. So if you have a coffee maker that you are willing to donate, please tell me or any one of the Board of Deacons. Thank you. Good morning. I can't believe I have this announcement because I can't believe it's for Christmas. It's about poinsettia orders. And the time whipped away on us, and all of a sudden yesterday, Karen Hartrich and I decided we better tell you about the end date and how to order poinsettias for decoration beginning the 16th of December. Um, the deadline for the orders is December 6th, which is just a breath away. Order forms will be online in the weekly news, um, or call Jim in the office with an order. Order forms will also be here next week, next to the bulletins on the back table. And you can put the money or the check in the flower envelope, and it's the only thing that I've heard of in a long time that's the same cost as last year. And it's $10 a plant, and you take it with you at any of the three services on Christmas Eve. Just come up and take your plant and take it home. Last year they didn't make it because nobody was here to water them. They were here, but we weren't because of the weather. So uh, deadline again is December 6th so that Dashes can get our order in. Thanks. I feel like I should be leaning this way, but because everybody's on this side, but that's okay. Um, we've had just the right number of announcements. So now we shift gears. Now we take a moment to still our souls, to prepare ourselves for the rest of worship as we listen to the organ meditation.
None of you are here by accident. The creator of the universe finds some glee, finds some joy in creating place, space, and time for the creator's children to gather. We don't come here to find God. God is found everywhere. We come here to find each other finding God. Let us come together and saying yes to God and God's invitation for us to enjoy place, space, and time together. In the presence of God, whose word has called the stars into being. In the presence of a God whose arms have held children, whose eyes have sparkled with laughter. In the presence of a God whose breath has stirred within us and caused our hearts to thirst for love. Before you, giver of life, we come in faith in search of love and truth and wholeness. Peggy was teaching a study of the Bible the other day. And as we worked our way through the Old Testament, we became aware of cycles within the Old Testament. The people of Israel are called to be God's people. And they say yes. And then they sin and they fall away. And the people of Israel are called to be God's people and they say yes, and they sin, and they fall away. And the people of Israel are called to be God's people, and they say yes, and then they fall away. Every Sunday, strangely enough, we celebrate that cycle here as a part of worship. If we say there is no sinning, if we say there is no falling away in our lives, then there is no access to the invitation 
to be God's children again, healthy, healed, whole, and forgiven. Let us come together in prayer. Loving God, we know that you have called us to be your people and that you love us with an everlasting love. We thank you that you guide us through all of life. But God, life can sometimes be very discouraging. We do not always recognize your presence or accept your power. We often wallow in discouragement and doubt, weakening our ability to live as your people in the world. Please forgive us. Help us to trust you more fully. For the sake of Christ, amen. Scripture tells of folks an awful lot like you and I, good church people who get nervous. Get nervous because everything about how they know to be faithful is changing. So they come to the Christ and they bring with them a woman who has committed a particular sin. She has been caught in the sin of adultery. And they say to Jesus, for what this woman has done, she must be punished. She must be punished in such a way that no one will ever do it again. So she must be put to death. And Jesus looked at them, as Jesus looked at all, looks at all of us, and says, do what you must to hold your world together. But let the one of you who has no sin in their own life, let that person throw the first stone. And the story tells us that one by one they mumble and they grumble and all the good church folk go home. All that is left is Jesus and the woman. And as Jesus looked at those good church people, Jesus looks at the woman, Jesus looks at us and says, where are your accusers? And the woman looks around for us and says, they are gone. And Jesus says, neither do I accuse you. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Amen. A lesson is read from the book of Psalms, 34, 1 through 10 and 22. Praise for deliverance from trouble. Psalm 34 is known as one of the alphabetic Psalms. It is one of nine found in the entire book. It is acrostic, which means that the first line of each stanza begins with a successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 
The psalm would have sounded much different in the original text being sung as a worship song. This psalm shows us the grace of God given to sinful humanity. Through the psalm, we will see the result of a repentant heart that has received forgiveness. I will bless our God always. Praise will continually be on our, my lips. My soul will boast about our God. Let the oppressed hear it and be glad. Glorify our God with me, and let us exalt God's name together. I sought our God who answered me and freed me from all of my fears. Those who look to God, those who look to our God, are radiant, and their faces are never covered with shame. The poor called out, our God heard, and saved them from all of their troubles. The angel of our God and camps around those who revere God and rescues them. Taste and see how good our God is. Happiness comes to those who take refuge in our God. Holy people of God, revere Adani, for those who stand in awe of God lack nothing. The young lion may grow weak and hungry, for those who seek our God will lack no good thing. Our God ransoms the lives of the faithful, and none who take refuge in our God will see punishment. This is the word of the Lord.
the fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, begins with words we have probably heard before. These words are called the Beatitudes. I begin with the first verse. I end with the tenth verse. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you, persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Now, you three are related to that guy over there, right? <coughs> the story I have for you this morning is going to remind you a lot of the words that he read. So, this story is called, Let the Whole Earth Sing Praise. Let the whole earth sing praise. Sun and moon, stars and comets in the heaven, praise God. Light and darkness, day and night, showers and frost, ice and snow, bless God. Fire, heat, lightning and clouds, mountains, hills, seas, rivers, and fountains, praise God. Fruitful trees, cedars, and all that sprout upon the earth, whales, fishes, and all creatures that move in the water, bless God. Birds, Everything that flies in the air. Dogs, cats, all animals and creeping things on the earth. Praise God. All people, young and old. Let everything in heaven and on earth bless and praise God. God. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, on a day set aside to remember all those who have gone before us, on a day set aside to remember those who have taught us so much about your love, we give thanks. 
on this day. We praise you. We praise you for all that you have given us. We praise you for the sun and the moon and the stars. We praise you for the food on our table and the roof over our head and the clothes on our backs. We praise you for our puppies and our kitties. We praise you for everything that brings a little bit of joy, a little bit of relief into our lives. We give thanks for our story, the Bible, because it's full of opportunities to give thanks. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you very, very much. And you will head off to church school. Thank you. This will not be too much of a surprise to anybody. I like to pray. Uh, and I think in the way that you're supposed to pray, I love to re lead people in prayer. And people expect that when we gather together as a congregation, whatever it is we'll do, we're doing, it will start with a prayer. Whatever it is we're doing, it will finish with a prayer. If that means a meal downstairs, if that means a Bible study, if that means a gathering of youth out to the parking lot to head to Duffield, whatever it is we do, I enjoy putting a prayer in front of it all and behind it all. Well, I also like writing prayers, and some of you have experienced those written prayers in times of joy, in times of celebrating a new church year, in times of grief and sorrow. So, I went and found some prayers. Three of them I did not write. One of them I did. But I think these prayers are a perfect coming together of the Beatitudes and what they mean for us as followers of Jesus Christ and all souls, all saints, those who have gone before us, those who have shown blessed lives shows what it means to be blessed by God for living faithful lives. The first prayers are from a book called More Than Words. And I have copies for people that I will put on the back if you would like to take them home with you. God, our creator and sustainer, you loved us long before we knew ourselves to be lovable, and you love us still. Give us, we pray, a greater awareness of your love for all people, a confidence in their action of your grace, in us and your church. Inspire us with a greater sensitivity to the poor and the oppressed. Give us the courage to act on their behalf. We praise you today for your mysterious ways among us, for your presence in the midst of human affairs and your seeming absence. By the power of your spirit, may we grow in the truth that impels us to act justly and thus give expression to the compassion of your child Jesus. This we ask through this same Jesus Christ who lives among us as friend and savior. A second prayer. Good and gracious God, who are we that you have loved us so well 
when we find ourselves so difficult to trust? How is it that you have given us this world of yours, each other and the future that is in our hands? We have need of your compassion, your power, and your wisdom. Our own has once again proven inadequate in the face of so much need. Be strong in us, purify our intentions, deepen our commitment, be for us all that we need, be God for us. We await your saving presence. And finally, God of our hope, we give thanks for this day and for these people and for your gospel that gives this day meaning and provides your people with direction. Stay close to us. Do not pass from our view, lest we lose our way and our hearts. Encourage us, root us in you, make us desire your life in us, that our only fear is your absence, and our greatest joy is your love. Those were from a book called More Than Words. This final prayer um, I have written. Loving God, we give thanks that the be attitude, that the attitude of faith-filled following always comes with the faiths. Help us to remember the parents, the grandparents, the families, the friends, the neighbors, the church school teachers, the surrogate family that showed us the way, that made us feel at home in your home. Lord, hear us now in silence as we name some of those names. Help us, loving God, to be the very visible faith that has been blessed to be a blessing to those we know, to those we don't know, to those whose joy lifts us up, and those whose grief threatens to overwhelm us, to those who celebrate us, and for those who ridicule us. We pray your strength, which makes the adventure possible. Amen.
I have names that have been given to me by folks. Um, and I will make them a part of our prayers of thanksgiving today. Those who have gone before us, those who have showed us the way, those who have smiled us into a place of being really comfortable here. Um, comfortable enough to be made uncomfortable when we leave uh, to go out and reach out in God's name. So, um, loving God, for this day we give thanks. For the gift of life, we give thanks. For the sense of family that we have become a part of as we arrive, enjoy each, comp each other's company, and then depart. We ask your special presence this day. This day, we remember, Joan, uh, we remember Daniel Gibbons. Um, Lord, in your mercy. This day, Lord, we remember uh, Mary's late husband, Frank, and mother, Mary Ann. Lord, in your mercy. This day, we pray for um, the family of Helen Gigi Spector. Lord, in your mercy. This day, we pray for Dan Smith. We pray for the family of, of Dan Smith and the all that he left behind. Lord, in your mercy. This day, Lord, we lift up before you all those who are in our hearts, um, all those who have gone before us and they have had a special role in us feeling known and loved and remembered. And Lord, we let these people lead us into other prayer. We pray for Joan Malkowitz, John's mother in the hospital. Um, we ask your presence for um, Christopher Turpin, Mark Turpin, Mike Turpin, uh, all of them going through uh, problems. Um, we ask your presence, especially we pray for Chris and who has problems with his back, pray that he might get the therapy he needs. This day, Lord, we pray for David Steves entering hospice care, Patricia Moore, uh, cardiac problems, our friend Donna Sleep, who hopefully in a few days will be out of her chair where she has to sit face down and continue on her adventure of being able to see again. Um, we lift up Gary Reese and family. We lift up Janet. We lift up Brian Lane, brother of Carol Ramunder's son-in-law. We lift up the best friend of Heather Malkowitz, transferred to a treatment facility. We lift up Louie. We lift up Gary. We lift up the recovering throughout the world. Lord, we give thanks for the instruction that comes our way, that allows us to feel blessed, to know blessings, and to be a blessing to those who need it most. Lord, as the 
bell has been rung for those who have gone before us. Hear now the bell chime for each and every one here that we may show forth blessings, that we may be a blessing to those who need it most. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Let us now take a moment to give thanks. Spend a moment with our eyes closed tight or our eyes wide open. Let us take a moment to be thankful for all that God has done for us, all that God can do in and through us.
You're praying. You have, a, you have what you need there? Um, dedicating ourselves to God's work and love and prayer. That's you. Okay. That's did you get, did, did you have, do you have the prayer? I do not. Tell you what. Okay. I'll fill in for you. Great. Thank you so much. Because I like to pray. I appreciate that, Robert. Okay. <laughs> Loving God, we give thanks. We give thanks that perhaps the most important gift we have when we are together is the gift of laughter. You don't take yourself too seriously. You don't take us too seriously. We must not take ourselves too seriously. We give thanks for the place, space, and time to come to you in prayer, to enjoy your company, even as perhaps you have enjoyed ours. Um, show us the way out the door, Lord. Maybe we'll have some Panera bread in hand. Show us the way out the door. Um, maybe we'll have a word that we can share with a friend, a neighbor, a child across the street. Show us out the door so that we can return and do enjoy each other's company next week. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>sung that hymn in a while and my wife was a choir practice and she said oh yeah we're singing that one a guy gets killed by a bear <laughs> and everybody was going a bear and then we found out it was a fierce wild beast now we leave we've been here we've celebrated where we've been we've celebrated those who have led the way and now we leave to find blessings from God in the lives that we lead and to be a blessing to those who need to see that acted out before them. And the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, communion, and support of the Holy Spirit, let it be ours this day, every day, now and forevermore. Amen.
Gott hat. 